ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll have an update on the farm bill and find out how this year's weather may impact the cattle market. Plus, using genetic testing to improve your herd and your profits. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. In our news this week, Congress is just coming back into session after their long August break. And one of the biggest pieces of unfinished business is the Farm Bill. The heat is on now because the House of Representatives failed to approve a new five-year farm bill this summer. The current farm legislation expires as of September 30th, and programs needed by cattle producers are in jeopardy, including disaster assistance and conservation programs. Colorado Republican Co uh, Congressman Cory Gardner spoke at the Cattle Industry Summer Conference, and we caught up with him to get his perspective on the status of the farm bill. Well, the Farm Bill passed the House. Now, it's only the ag portion of the Farm Bill. 80% of the Farm Bill deals with food nutrition and food stamps. So the portion that passed out of the House of Representatives deals with the commodity programs, crop insurance, livestock assurance program, a conservation title, those ag-specific projects. That passed out of the House. Now we're waiting for the Senate to and the House to join together in a conference committee and, and send it back to both chambers for final approval. You know, I, I think that they'll, they'll come to an agreement in the House and the Senate. It'll look actually a bit closer to what came out of the House and Senate ag committees than what came off of the House floor. But I hope they do it sooner rather than later. To join NCBA in helping pass a farm bill and addressing other key issues that impact cattlemen, become an NCBA member. To find out more, visit our website. That's beefusa.org. Maybe the only thing more unpredictable than Congress is the weather. Following last year's drought, this spring and summer has brought some welcome moisture to many areas of our country, but there are still plenty of weather-related problems impacting grain and hay production as well as cattle producers. At the recent Cattle Industry Summer Conference in Denver, we asked folks to provide an update on their weather situation so far this year. It's been a little bit better for us at home in Texas than it was last year and the previous year, but uh, we're not quite out of the woods yet. We still got a lot of dry pockets and uh, not, not to the point where we feel confident about restocking real heavily. So, uh, you know, we're still kind of waiting in sea mode. For us in the Northwest, it's been hot and dry. And so we need to get some winter moisture, some snowpack, or we might have a little bit of problem with irrigation supplies next year. It's been a real roller coaster. We, we started out the year in the drought, and it, come April we got over 30 inches of snow, and we got over six inches of rain in May, and it, it kind of broke, and we went from being in real trouble to actually having an above average year so far now. The weather in pattern has improved uh, for a lot of the drought area, including my own ranch here in the west. Uh, we're better off than we were last year. We're not out of the drought, but we are gonna, we are gonna have a decent year this year. It's been dry, and then we've gotten some really nice rains in the uh, middle of July, and that's not common in our area. The grass is really responding well to the rain that we've got. We've never had really late summer rains since I've been in the operation and uh, it's really making the grass respond extremely well, but it's been extremely dry beforehand, but uh, the good Lord will give us rain when he thinks we need it. I think if my granddad woke up in his graves, he would probably be pretty ashamed of our pastures, but we've been very, very blessed and fortunate in Oklahoma in the month of July. I had nine inches of rain, almost twice the normal rainfall, but you know, I guess it's kind of regression to the mean because for the last two years, I've probably had less than an inch. So I think with that said, it, it may start to provide a foundation uh, to put this industry back on a solid footing. Undoubtedly, weather is one of the biggest factors impacting cattlemen and their marketing prospects. And that's our subject in this week's Market Watch. Market Watch. 
Joining me now to talk more about the impact of the lingering drought and the outlook for our cattle market is Jim Robb. He's the Director of Marketing for the Livestock Marketing Information Center. Thanks so much for coming back to the show, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, we've heard a lot of differing reports from around the country relative to this rainfall. Um, are we working our way out of this drought? I think we are largely. We still have lingering impacts, as you mentioned, and some areas are still in drought. We look at the USDA data for the most recent week. Last year, we had about 60% of the pasture and range in the U.S. in the poor and very poor categories. Mm -hmm. And today, we have just under 30%. Wow. So a big improvement, but still, droughts tend to have a lingering impact. So what's your sense of what this means, particularly to the grain and forage markets? Well, certainly we have a much bigger corn crop than a year ago. The forage side is a little tougher regionally. You know, we have much more different conditions. So when we look at grain prices overall, they're going to be lower. Maybe hay prices don't come down quite as fast. And so I think producers need to keep that in mind. You just told me that you just returned uh, from a trip in, to Nebraska. What are you seeing with these feeder calf prices now, and what do you anticipate as we move into the fall months? We've actually had a very strong, last year prices just collapsed over the summer months in the calf and yearling marketplace. Mm -hmm. This year we've actually had a rally. Mm -hmm. If we look at this, this past quarter or the quarter we're in right now, we're up about 2% year to year on the fed cattle market, 9% year to year mm -hmm. on the yearling market, and 15% year to year on the calf market. Now, on the Southern Plains, that's $20. $2 per hundred weight higher than a year ago. So certainly the improved conditions are part of that, lower corn prices, and a pretty strong uh, overall beef market. That's real improvement. And uh, look into your crystal ball for us, Jim. What do you see uh, moving forward outside uh, this fall? And more importantly, how would you anticipate producers should be planning as they think about their marketing plans? Well, there's still a lot of unknowns on this corn crop. We know it's bigger, but how much bigger will be a determining factor, especially on calf prices in the fourth quarter. We're looking at fed cattle prices in the fourth quarter, about 3% above a year ago. Calf prices probably fully 10% above last year, maybe a little bit stronger. So that's really good news. We look a little bit further ahead. You know, we're looking at stronger prices in 2014. We do have a smaller cow herd than we did a year ago, mm. still shrinking because of the lingering impacts of drought. But producers actually this year have a lot more options to look at, where last year really drought sort of drove their decision making. We have a lot of options on how to market calves this year, mm -hmm. and even our cull cows that we need to look at. Well, I was gonna follow up with you uh, on a question about cull cows. We're getting into weaning time now, and uh, what would you advise relative to uh, how producers should think about these cull cows? Very dependent on your forage base and your availability of forage to hold cows. Last year, we really didn't have a very strong cull cow market, mm -hmm. and then it didn't gain strength into the new year. This year, I think it'll be the opposite of that. We'll mm. probably gain strength into 2014. Mm. So maybe the, those with a good forage base and maybe some options, maybe they've already pulled down their livestock numbers, may want to look at this cull cow marketing strategies a little mm. closer because there may be some opportunities there, much more than we've had in recent years. Hold those cows, put some pounds on them, and uh, wait to market them to a little later. If we can do that economically, it might be a strategy to look at. Very good. It's always good to have you on the show. Thank you for your perspective. Thank you. To find out more about the cattle markets and to see video replays of our episodes, just visit our website at cattlemanthecattlemen.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's something that actually helps producers make better breeding and better informed decisions early on in the calf's life. How genetic testing can make all the difference in the quality and profitability of your herd. Plus, we'll head to Florida to meet a family that's doing an exceptional job of caring for their cattle and their land. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. 
Respiratory disease is a significant animal health issue in the beef industry. It costs producers nearly a billion dollars in lost profits each year, and it's the most prevalent disease in calves older than 30 days. So why not prevent respiratory disease before it steals from your bottom line? Vista Once protects your calves with the most complete respiratory disease coverage available, and Vision Blackleg vaccines can add 14 pounds per calf at weaning. For further information, contact your local veterinarian or animal health supplier. Welcome back. Feed yard operators want their cattle to gain weight quickly and efficiently right from the moment they're unloaded from the truck. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter introduces us to one Kansas operation that works hard to make sure animals in their care always get a strong start. For more than 50 years, the Foot family has been on the front lines of the beef industry. And at Pioneer Feed Yard, their 35,000 head facility in western Kansas, producing high quality beef is just as important as growing cattle efficiently and profitably. The Foot family wants to provide the best possible f food and, and beef for the, uh, for the world. Uh, they try to put out as much as we can at the, at the best quality that we can. Our goal is to take, you know, uh, calf from beginning to end and get the most potential out of that calf that we possibly can and to have healthy cattle in the meantime. At Pioneer, they understand the importance of getting incoming cattle off to a good start. What and how much cattle eat during their first few days can set the tone for the entire feeding period. Their consulting nutritionist recommended adjusting the starting ration to include Bovatec, an ionophore that improves feed efficiency and gain without compromising feed intake. That very recommendation created big gains for the cattle and even bigger profits for the feed yard. I've been really recommending putting Bovatec in starting diets for about the last five to six years. Everyone that I work with is using Bovatec up front as a, as a starting program in their diet. Our measuring stick is are we getting better within each location year over year over year and we've had several feed yards feeding Bovatec for two or three years now and we consistently see our feeding performance get better year over year over year and a lot of that is just driven by consumption. An ionophore is a, is a naturally occurring end product from a fermentation process that when fed to ruminants has the effect of altering the microbial population within the rumen. They will improve gain and efficiency and can actually modulate feed intake. If these cattle aren't gaining what they need to gain at the beginning, and we're not going to get the dollar amount that we need. If we do not get that upfront good healthy start on these cattle, not only health wise but rumen wise, we're not going to see the benefits that we need from start to finish. When you look at the starting phase, it is the most critical in the feeding period of that animal. And to me, the, the greatest value of a product like Bovatec is our ability to allow that animal to attain a high dry matter intake. In my opinion, as a nutritionist, an onophore should be in every animal every day. Based on what the, what the compound does, there's value at all stages. So I think every animal ought to have them every day. While the starting phase is arguably the most critical phase in the feeding period, it is important to maximize feed intake on arrival. Consumption is one thing Jason Gerstberger is not willing to compromise. For that reason, he trusts Bovatec. Anything that we can do to keep these cattle healthy, growing, and keep their intake as much as we possibly can is a benefit, and so it's a benefit to use in starting cattle to keep that increased consumption there. Basically, performance is really driven by the first half of the feeding period. So a proper start, uh, proper consumption, getting cattle eating big, that's really where we make our performance. If we don't get that done up front, we don't get the opportunity to make it up at the end of the feeding period. So we, we concentrate in all the feed yards that I work with, and this, this one would be no different. We really concentrate on incoming cattle, getting cattle started on feed properly, making sure that consumption is proper. A feed yard nutritionist will go to a lot of lengths to design a ration that cattle want to eat and will eat in quantity. Uh, the thing that we don't want to do with an onophore is hamper or damage what they have designed and put together. Um, some onophores can actually depress feed intake. Bovatec does not do that. 
In addition to improved feed efficiency and gain in feed yard animals, there are also health benefits to including Bovitec in a ration, such as helping with the control of coccidiosis, a common disease in cattle on arrival. Coccidiosis is very important to control um, because it's going to cause health issues with the cattle, therefore decrease in consumption, decrease in productivity, and we're going to lose a lot of our benefit from the cattle. So when I start cattle, I'll tend to start them on a fairly high level of, of Bovitec, depending upon the group, somewhere between two and 300 milligrams per head per day. It gives us the ability to get coxy control right away and not have a negative effect on, on intake. We'll have more from Kansas when we return. Stay with us. Holland equipment is built smart for the way you farm and the T6 series tractors from New Holland are the ideal mid-range tractors for cattlemen. Whether your job is loader work, operating hay equipment, moving round bales or pulling a mixer wagon, the T6 provides power and performance with optimal comfort. Choose from three four-cylinder and three six-cylinder models with the right combination of transmission, hydraulic and cab options to fit specific haying or row crop applications. And T6 engines are tier 4 a emissions compliant, featuring New Holland's exclusive Eco Blue technology. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all of the benefits available to cattle producers. Welcome back. Let's return to Kansas and reporter Brian Baxter with more about getting cattle off to a strong start. Bovitec is also approved by the FDA for use in combination with oreomycin, which provides broad spectrum health and performance benefits. This means all of the energy of the cattle can go into efficiently converting feed into gain. Using the Bovitec, we are able to use a medicated feed additive in with the cattle to help keep our respiratory issues decreased and keep the consumption of the cattle. One of the things that we that we like about the Bovitec Oreo program that we use here is we feel like we get very good consumptions up front on the cattle. Uh, we're from a regulatory standpoint, Bovitec is approved for use with with Oreo mycin, and we feel that's a strong part of our starting program to build consumption, build health, and get cattle rolled up on feed in in basically a three-week period. The value of feeding the combination of oreomycin and Bovitec is that we will have healthier cattle and anytime you have healthier cattle you're not diverting energy towards response to disease and it will go towards gain. So healthier cattle generally equal more efficient and better gaining cattle. The Bovitec oreomycin combination allows feed programs to be in compliance with strict FDA regulations. Plus, Bovitec doesn't require a step-up program and can be fed at the full dose on arrival so cattle adapt quickly. The biggest benefit is that we don't have to step them up. We can just go straight on the, the Bovitec and just go with it. We can just have a set standard and start and feed that way. We can get the most benefit out of those cattle that we can get with the feed. One of the nice things about not using a step-up program in terms of ionophore levels in the diet is, is primarily we're going to take yearling cattle in this feed yard. Starting on Bovitec at a, at a 30 or 33 gram per ton level it allows us to get a significant amount of ionophore into a calf, you know, that will control coxie, uh, as well as improving a feed efficiency in the yearling without worrying about reducing feed intake on the cattle up front. Ionophores have consistently proven to be an asset in growing and finishing operations. Bovitec provides a superior return on investment because it improves feed efficiency and average daily gain so cattle reach their market weight sooner. 
the long and short of it is, if we can get feed into those cattle, that feed energy is converted into gain. And if we can do that efficiently, we'll have a chance to make money with a pen of cattle. Bovitech allows us to drive dry matter intake and reach those ultimate production objectives. I like what we see in terms of how well we can get cattle to eat, and especially early in the feeding period. And, and like we said earlier, that is the key to performance. We certainly haven't seen anything negative as we've made the switch in, in all the yards I work with over the last four or five years. And the biggest thing is, guys, it's, it's simple. And I, I can't stress that enough. It's, 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 it's an approved combination, and it's a simple program to implement, and it really makes, makes get things easier for the guys getting cattle started. Feed yards are the very complex operation. You know, we make about 1.4 million pounds of feed in this, in this feed yard a day. If you look at the foot family in general, we make about 7 million pounds of feed a day. We want something that's effective, but yet at the same time, that's simple enough that we can, we can repeat that process 365 days a year. The way that we feed uh, cattle here, I see Bovitech is something that we will continue using. Starting cattle is very important. If, they do not, if they're not started right, you're gonna have a, a loss in production at some time in the early stages of the cattle. If you have that loss in production, that's loss that you could have as, as a benefit. And if you have that benefit, then you're you're going to increase your gains, your consumptions, and in the old big turn of it, you're going to see the final paycheck to be a little higher. Reporting from Oakley, Kansas, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you'd like to learn more about Bovitech or any other Zoetis product, visit zoetisus.com or log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll have more right after this. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out beefusa.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. It's time to gear up for fall with big savings on John Deere hay equipment. Get 0% financing on mower conditioners, balers, and select hay tools. And for a limited time, get up to $3,600 off a new 8 or 9 series round baler. Plus, an extra $750 in-season bonus. So don't wait. Come in today before these gear up for fall savings come to an end. to environmental stewardship, there are all kinds of challenges cattle producers face as they work to care for the land and to leave a legacy for future generations. One by one, we're featuring the seven regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Awards. And this week, let's head to Region 2 and meet the winning family from the great state of Florida. Just outside of Orlando, practically in the shadow of Disney World, is Kissimmee Park Properties. Despite continual urban pressure, the Platt family's ranch has been in operation for more than 100 years. We're only about nine miles from the uh, turnpike, 20 minutes to downtown Orlando, and uh, about 27 miles from Disney. We're in development's way. We enjoy the property. We've been here for 135 years. We want to keep it. The ranch operates a 250 head cow-calf operation, as well as 60 acres of citrus groves. Protecting the water in and around the property is a priority, but not an easy task, considering the ranch has two and a half miles of pasture located on the shoreline of a major lake. We are on Lake Topicaliga. It is the headwaters of the Northern Everglades. So we have to kind of watch what our water does. We've, we've tried to 
limit our drainage that goes to the lake. That's something that we've been careful of generations ago. Uh, we recognize that that moderate body of water is, a, is an important to the livestock and to our lifestyle and to this ranch uh, as it is to the growth around it. So we've always been very cautious of that. Rotational grazing is a key component of the ranch's daily stewardship efforts. Nearly five miles of fencing has been installed to allow the plats to manage their forage more effectively. Rotational grazing helps maintain the grass and the soil and also helps prevent invasive species from coming on too strongly. I'm really impressed with what a, a rotational grazing has done to our grasses. We're, we're improving all of our grasses without a lot of inputs to them. We've increased our herd by 67 percent since we went into the uh, rotational period and that's been without any new inputs uh, besides the fencing. In the past, limited water for the cattle prevented rotational grazing year-round. The Platts worked with NRCS to install six water troughs and around two miles of water lines, which allowed them to establish 12 new pastures for the cattle. The Platt family's conservation efforts extend into the citrus groves as well. Their old irrigation system was replaced with a new one that is 50% more effective. We've went to a low volume jet irrigation, which puts the water right at the root system. We don't have to overwater that way. The whole field is not watered just at the tree. And then that's helped us with our, our fertilizing system. We've went to a fertigation system, liquid uh, injected through that irrigation system. And that again, puts the fertilizer where we need it, right on the, uh, on the tree root base. Our production the first year went up 40%. So we saw a lot of benefits to putting a little bit of fertilizer once a week instead of three applications over a year. The Platt family are leaders in the ranching industry here in this county in that they are willing to uh, go out there and try new things. They are innovators, they are, are willing in accepting uh, new ideas and uh, willing to implement those ideas and the science behind those ideas. For generations, the Platt family has put in extra effort to protect wildlife by creating migration corridors for the animals and using controlled burns to enhance the native woodlands. As a result, Kissimmee Park Properties has become a veritable Disney World for wildlife. We have a lot of wildlife. We have a lot of deer and turkey, um, and we also have gopher tortoises, uh, bald eagles, and the Everglades snail kite. We're very, very fortunate to have the corridors that are built into the property. That was started with Grandpa years ago, and we're just trying to enhance what he started. The Platt family has maintained their ranch for more than a century, and they're hoping these stewardship efforts will allow the land to be enjoyed by generations to come. I'm just enhancing what my grandfather started, and, and that's what I hope my kids can say, that what I started now, they'll be able to take on and and move even to another level than what we've done. My grandchildren will be able to look at the ranch and see a beautiful setting and the real natural beauty of Florida and also see the cows and see the citrus and see a viable business. I hope that we continue to improve it, that we can find ways to generate revenue, minimize expenses, and be a part of the community as long as possible. I think stewardship isn't today, it was yesterday and it's tomorrow. And it's something that isn't governed by regulation, it's governed from the heart. NCBA members are helping to make a difference in the environment every day. To join them as members of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or Email us at c2c at beef.org. We'll be right back. Join producers from around the country at the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. 
It's an event that, that we will never miss. I love seeing the enthusiasm. I think it's great. It's a perfect combination and the perfect time to hold the NCBA convention. Join your fellow cattlemen for the latest cattle industry news, education, networking, and fun. Plus, at the NCBA trade show, get the latest in industry technology for the cattle business. This trade show is one of the best trade shows that is out there. It's amazing the amount of industry and businesses that come here to be a part and, and there's no other place that for those of us as beef producers can go to have this much information in one place. So follow me to Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, February 4th through the 7th. Learn more at beefusa.org. Welcome back. Beef producers understand the value of knowledge, especially when it helps them make more informed and more profitable decisions. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla has more on how DNA testing can help ranchers more reliably evaluate the genetic potential of cattle and improve an operation's bottom line. On the Arrowhead Ranch in north central Tennessee, owners George and Ginger Peak work with their herd manager, Tammy Hill, to care for a small group of registered Black Angus cattle. We're a small operation here. Uh, right now we have 32 head of uh, cattle. We've been here approximately um, 17 years. Since about 2005 is when we started the registered Angus um, seed stock operation. Arrowhead may be a smaller operation, but like most producers, the Peaks want to be the best. George and Ginger realized the best way to accomplish their goals was to focus on improving the genetics of their herd. We have a certain limited amount of resources, uh, as uh, there are in so many different uh, you know, operations, but this uh, DNA testing really, really helps us to identify which animals are going to be able to um, um, utilize the, the available forage that we have and it will save me by identifying those calves as soon as they're born like that, that we can identify their genetic potential. We don't have a lot of funds to spend on feeding out animals that are not genetically going to improve our herd. Genetics are important in our operation because it helps the producer get the, the herd that they want sooner. It helps a producer with 30 head or 5,000 head. I've heard it related to trying to land on an aircraft carrier at night without any navigation. You're going to be lucky if you even uh, get on the, the, the carrier. And with this genetic testing, it's, um, it's put us, uh, it's given us the information that we need. Arrowhead Ranch has made great strides in its genetic program over the last several years, thanks in part to the use of the high-density 50K test. Genomic enhanced expected progeny differences powered by Zoetis HD50K from Angus Genetics Incorporated provide the most dependable option to help predict the genetic merit of young, unproven Angus cattle. After learning more about the details of their operation, we realized that HD50K could be incorporated easily into their program as they were interested in selling the genetic benefits of their herd. We use it on every animal that's born on this property. That helps um, us determine what we're going to do with each calf that's born, where we're going to channel it, whether we're going to channel our bulls into a commercial herd or a bull test station, or whether we're going to um, steer them, um, and our heifers, whether we're going to use them as replacement heifers or we're going to try to sell, sell them to a, a commercial herd. What we're doing with the HD50K product is actually getting down to the genomics and the genes that those animals actually inherited from their mothers and from their fathers so that we can make more informed breeding decisions early in the calf's life. Since um, 2011, 
is when we got into the Zoetis uh, testing and uh, the DNA testing. And this part of it right here has really uh, uh, given us a leap forward as far as being able to produce uh, a quality product and to be able to identify those animals that are specifically tailored to what we need to utilize the grass and the production here on this ranch. Well, the test increases our accuracy on the EPDs from like a 0.05, which is not really accurate, to at least a 0.25. So um, right there, we know that we're, not, we're dealing with data that is, is accurate and that, that's real. And that compares to all the other animals that are being tested by the same thing. It's very good return on our operation. I, it's, it's our main reason that we've been able to move our herd genetically um, leaps and bounds ahead of what we had before. Zoetis formed a partnership with Angus Genetics Incorporated, a wholly owned subsidiary of the American Angus Association, in which AGI is the exclusive distributor of HD50K for Angus tests. Zoetis HD50K is the beef industry's first high-density DNA panel. It has more than 54,000 DNA markers and provides results for 18 economically important traits. All 54,000 markers of that individual animal are going to be scanned using the HD50K product. So what that does, it gives us a true indication of what the animal actually did inherit from both its mother and its father. The testing process is very easy for producers to do. We can actually scan animals using a simple blood test, which is preferred by the American Angus Association. Through the American Angus Association, those results are actually reported to the producers on their secure website. I mean, the Angus Association has made it really easy, and so does uh, Zoetis. We'll take uh, dry matter intake. Um, that is extremely hard for us to measure anything like that. And so when we get this number, then uh, I can make a good decision on uh, whether we're going in the right direction. As an industry, we are producing more beef with fewer cattle and that trend has to continue into the future to meet demand. So we have to be more efficient. A test like HD50K is so dependable that it helps monitor traits like feed intake and growth. And that helps ensure the trend towards more beef will continue exponentially. We will be able to exaggerate that trend with dependability, reliability, and selection, all powered by HD50K. In order to find animals that are HD50K tested, one of the best resources that a producer can use is the genomeexchange.com website. The Genome Exchange website actually connects people by providing a, an outlet or a list for producers that actually have bulls and females for sale. It also gives those producers an opportunity to promote themselves a little bit and give them an opportunity to promote a sale, promote an event that they might be having within their operation to bring producers together and bring customers that are interested in finding HD50K tested animals. Genome exchange, that's a, been a big help to us and a real benefit to us um, because of the fact that um, we've had uh, one fellow this year come to us and uh, he got our name off the exchange and he came and visited our ranch and he ended up buying two animals from us. And uh, we were really uh, you know, glad that he came and, and he could see the value of the genetic testing by going to that website. We'll have more on the value of using genetic tools and technologies when we return. Stay with us. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative, which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA is our voice in Washington. I'm an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member because I feel it's important that we have uh, an association such as this in Washington, D.C. to support our cattlemen throughout the country. I am an NCBA member. 
Join me today. Welcome back. Let's return to Tennessee and reporter Brad Bulla with more insights into using genetic technologies. Zoetis HD50K isn't the only powerful genetic technology available to Angus producers. There's also GeneMax, a simple and affordable DNA test that is intended for use in commercial herds that use registered Angus sires. The GeneMax results actually enable commercial Angus producers to take advantage of the individual scores to help them make more informed breeding decisions as well as mating decisions and it also helps them to decide individual parentage on animals so that actually helps and incorporate into their mating and breeding decisions as well. I recommend the GeneMax test to commercial Angus producers because it gives you more information than you've ever had before. It's a very affordable test for commercial producers to actually use, and it gives you a wealth of information that you would never be able to get anywhere else. The GeneMax test was developed in cooperation with Certified Angus Beef, Angus Genetics Incorporated, and Zoetis. It's designed for high percentage Angus replacement heifer candidates and feeder cattle to identify post weaning gain and marbling potential, two traits that influence feedlot profitability and qualifying for the CAB brand. It also comes with the option to match GeneMax tested calves with Zoetis HD50K tested sires from multi-sire breeding programs. Commercial producers that are using the GeneMax test can take advantage of the HD50K test as well because it actually assigns parentage to those individual calves that are born or that are sired by those HD50K tested bulls that are within their herd. Together, Zoetis HD50K tested and selected Angus bulls and GeneMax tested selected and mated replacements provide commercial users of Angus Genetics a powerful one-two punch for increased productivity, certified Angus beef, grid premiums, as well as the potential for increased profits. Ranchers around the country are taking advantage of all the Zoetis genomic tools and GE EPDs in order to make more precise selection and mating decisions. The bull buying and replacement heifer selection decisions that producers make today can have a profound effect on the future genetic makeup and profitability of a herd for years to come. This is going to be something that is going to be part of the future. It's not something that's just a trend. It's not something that's a fad. It's something that actually helps producers make better breeding and better informed decisions early on in the calf's life. A person's judgment is only as good as their information. And so the, the, the more information that I can get and I can give to my customers and I can show them, I can say, yeah, here's a tenderness score of this animal, then he knows right up front what he's getting. And so that's, not, that's important to me. That, that to me is value. That is value right there. We have a goal in mind. We have a goal for our genetics. And the only way we can get there is to be able to um, evaluate them. So the genomic enhanced EPDs are the ones that help us evaluate whether we're going towards our goal or going backwards from our goal. We already have people that come back and buy you know, year after year. So we must be doing something right. Reporting from Aaron, Tennessee, I'm Brad Bullock for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about HD50K, GeneMax, or any other Zoetis products, log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll have more right after this. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me today. Join me today. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. 
That's right. Where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real And feeding my family a home-cooked meal That's important to me That's important to me And planting the garden and watching it grow We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Cattlemen, the Kenneth and Caroline McDonald Ng Foundation is sponsoring their first cow-calf symposium at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, September 12th and the 13th. If you're looking for new methods and measurements for improving cow efficiency and production, explore your options at this symposium. The topics are presented by smart, savvy people. For tickets and info, call 575-743-6331. And bring your ideas, Einstein. We're thinking outside the box. The market was so hot on Monday, the buyers were burning his door. The cattle he'd bought for 70 cents were bringing six bits, maybe more. And on Tuesday, they went even higher. And it was hard not to sell at that price, but he knew in his heart that tomorrow we'd win. He was rolling the dice. And on Wednesday, they went through the ceiling. He'd never seen fats go so high, but that afternoon, they were slipping. But that never worried our guy, because his broker and banker and guru had predicted the downslide was done. So at 10 o'clock that Thursday morning, our hero turned down 81. No way. Well, Friday broke dismal and dreary, and the market continued to fall, and he watched it go down to break even. Not even one buyer called, and that weekend, consulting the paper, his horoscope promised good news. That was sure worth a drink at the Elks Club. And he got snockered plumb out of his shoes. And Monday was gloomy, and Tuesday was bad, and the rest of the week he was cursed. And by Friday, the price of grain jumped up, and that just made him feel worse. And by midweek, he finally was offered a sure bid of 65 cents. But he held fast at 65.50. So the buyer packed up and went. Now I know you're expecting the moral, explaining the lessons he learned about the man who thinks higher and higher, most likely gets his lower burned. But there ain't no use to pretend that a feeder or one of their kind would lock in a profit of eight cents if he thought he could hold out for nine. <laughs> and what of our hero, you're asking? Well, I guess I can tell you about that. He sold him for sixty-two fifty, and got docked for being too fat. This is Baxter Black from out there. <laughs> There's always something to learn or laugh about with Baxter Black. Thanks, Baxter. Don't go away, we'll have more right after this. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattleman is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, 
The National Cattlemen provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. It's only September, but it's not too early to mark your calendars for what could be a record-breaking cattle industry convention and NCBA trade show in Nashville, Tennessee. February 2014 is something cattlemen are already looking forward to. I am absolutely looking forward to having the convention in Nashville, as I do the other cities that have hosted the convention. Um, let's face it, uh, I don't think there is a bad NCBA convention, no matter where you have it. I was there two years ago, and, and I really liked it. it I think Nashville's a, a good place. It's kind of centrally located. A lot of people can drive in, and you, you get a big crowd, and, and I think it's a good place to have it. Nashville is very exciting. We have great uh, locations for our conventions, but Nashville uh, is always fun, always an exciting time. A big crowd, a great trade show, a good entertainment. We love going to Nashville and doing our work. The Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show is set for next February 4th through the 7th in Nashville. Find out more at beefusa.org. For this week's legacy photos, we head back to Florida and the Region 2 Stewardship Award winners, the Platt family. Let's take a look. Now don't forget, you can send us pictures of your farmer ranch by visiting our website, cattlemantocattlemen.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll head to Montana to see how one operation is protecting its calves from BRD. We'll head to Iowa to meet another environmental stewardship winner, and we'll share more cattle industry news Plus, enjoy another visit from our friend Baxter Black. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.